Hey guys, it's Natalia and today I have probably the most highly requested video of all time. I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I started my brand. So if you're new here and this is the first video that you're watching of me, hello, hi, I'm Natalia. Feel free to subscribe if you want more fun business and fashion content. Anyway, I started my business back in the summer in June of 2020 and I have been able to grow it pretty decently, I would say, in the past almost six months. It'll be six months next week, so I technically I'm not at the six month mark yet, but I've been able to grow my brand to over 10,000 followers on Instagram. I've gotten over 400 orders and it's all been within the time span of five months. So I wanna share with you guys my strategies, how I came up with everything, how I managed to gain an audience so that hopefully you guys can start your businesses and be equally as successful, if not more. So to make sure I cover everything, I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions of what you want me to cover. And I'm gonna kind of integrate them into my topics. I'm also gonna leave each topic and kind of the questions covered in the description with the timestamp of when it starts in case you want to only watch the marketing part of it, if you wanna watch financial part of it or whatever it is you want to get out of it. If there's a certain part of it, I'm gonna leave all the timestamps down below so you can skip ahead if you would like to because I have a feeling this might be a very long video, but I wanna make sure that I put in all the information possible and really give you guys everything you wanna know so I don't want to cut it too short either. So that's that. Without further ado, let's get into it. So step number one, let's talk about the concept. That is obviously the most important part of starting a business is just knowing like what your business is. What are you doing? What is your concept? What is your product? Why are you starting a business? Why do you want to do this? All these things, all these questions are really important to ask yourself when you're first starting off. For me personally, I've always known I wanted to start a business. It wasn't anything new and out of the blue at all for me. It's something that I've known for a very, very long time. I didn't think that the time I started was gonna be the time that I would start. I did not have that in mind at all, but it is something that I've known I've always wanted to do if that makes any sense I graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology in May of 2020 So this past May with a degree in fashion design and obviously with the pandemic and everything I was forced to move back home to Indiana where I was before living in New York And I had originally thought that after graduation I was going to be living in New York still and that I would be working for a company and kind of just building up myself and whatnot to get to the point to where I could start a brand that was kind of my plan that I had in mind but obviously 2020 had different plans and I ended up having to be back home and my only choices seemed to be either get a regular job just to get myself by and to make sure that I'm being able to support myself financially or B, start my brand and kind of just go for it. And being the person I am, I would rather take the risky route and I'd rather do something that I'm passionate about rather than just be safe. So I went ahead and started my business and it honestly has been a dream ever since. It's done really, really well and I've obviously learned a lot along the way, which is why I'm making this video to help you guys out. But that's kind of my story and how I started and why I started. I knew from day one that my concept was definitely going to be ethical fashion above everything because it's really important that my products are ethically produced and that no person is harmed in the process. And on top of that, I also decided to be very sustainable in my process because on top of not wanting to harm any people, I don't want to harm the planet anymore either because I just have done a lot of research on fashion and the environment and realized I didn't want to be part of that problem. So that is where my concept and my ideas came from in case you're wondering. So some questions that you guys gave me that kind of go along with that are how much did you prep before starting it? So honestly, I prepped for about a month before actually launching and starting the business Like I said, I graduated in May and then I started my business in late June, June 26th So between my graduation and launch day is the time that I was planning and kind of getting everything ready So I definitely think that you do need to take that time to plan and to make sure that you know what you're doing And make sure that everything is kind of set up and lined up I don't think it's one of those things that you can think about and then a week later start because I think that's too soon. It doesn't give you time to fully develop your ideas. Second question is how to make your brand recognizable. I really like this question because I do think it's really important. I think it goes hand in hand with, you know, really creating a solid concept for your business because it's important to make sure that you're not just another business. You're not just another clothing brand. What makes you special? Like why would people even want to follow you? Why would people want to buy from you when there's hundreds of thousands of other stores they could buy from? And this is where it's really important to have a solid concept and to really know why you're coming into this business. For me, like I said, it was the idea of ethical fashion, sustainable fashion, slow fashion. I follow a lot of brands that are like me. There's, I'm not the only one. There's plenty of incredibly talented designers that do the same thing that I do. But I found that a lot of the designers that I follow are not the same aesthetic as me. They're not the same vibe. I really wanted very beautiful, like fun, feminine pieces because that's kind of where my aesthetic lies. And a lot of the slow fashion brands that I followed were either really boho or a lot of them are really gender fluid, which is wonderful and I love that, but it's just not my 
style so I knew that there wasn't very many people if at all that kind of did the same thing as I do but also had the same aesthetic and design point that I do so that's where I think that I become a little bit more recognizable I also think I have a bit of an advantage in the sense of like I've had my YouTube channel for a very very long time and it's not like it's a huge channel or anything but the fact that I have somewhat of a following on there and I'm able to show the process and show behind the scenes of my business and behind the scenes of being a fashion designer I think is very new and unseen and unheard of I think a lot of fashion designers kind of hide their process a little bit they don't want to share the behind the scenes things they don't want to share their secrets or anything and I'm kind of the opposite and I just show you guys everything I'm pretty open about it and I think that's also a reason why people really like to follow me and really like my business is because I share all of that so I'm not saying that you need to have a YouTube channel and you need to start sharing everything but you do need to find something that makes you stand out from everybody else and really does make you recognizable as a brand and as a business and that is something that you need to think about the next questions are over just my collections in general how many pieces in a collection how often honestly I personally do not like to force creativity upon myself I find that my best pieces come when I'm not necessarily looking for them so for me it means being inspired by whatever's around me whatever fabric I find whatever it is I then decide to make something it's not like I'm forcing myself to come out with a collection every two weeks or every three weeks or whatever I think it naturally kind of happens just because I do get inspired naturally but I'm not forcing it on myself and I don't think there is a golden number of how much you should be putting out and how many pieces or whatever I think it's very personal it's very up to you and how your business works <laughs> All right, step number two, let's talk about production. How are you gonna produce your product? For me personally, I make all my products myself. I sew them all myself. I make all my patterns. I literally do all the sewing, I do it all. So it's really easy for me to kind of skip over that step just because I don't have to worry about any sort of middleman on production. But obviously I know that not everybody wants to sew all of their products and maybe you do want to send them out to manufacturers. Then if you do that, then you need to make sure you find a manufacturer you really align with. Make sure all of your beliefs and values are aligned with theirs. Make sure you're getting samples and don't just choose the first one that comes to your Google search page. Make sure that you are actually going through all of them and making sure that you're finding the one that really suits you. And if you're buying wholesale, again, make sure that aligns with your values. Make sure that the quality is up to par. You need to make sure that you're really investing time into researching all these things in production because it's super important that the quality and the standard of your product is as good as you're saying it is. You also need to take into consideration production time and what that's going to look like for you. For me personally, since I make everything, I kind to know how much I can make within a week so I only put out as much as I know I can make within a two week period I try to keep it under one week but I give myself two weeks just in case I get an overwhelming amount of orders or anything but say I can only make 10 t-shirts in a week I'm not gonna put 30 t-shirts up on my website because I know I'm not gonna be able to fulfill that in the time that I give my customers so I only put 10 at a time so you need to also think about that in your production process and the timing of everything and making sure you have enough inventory of everything that you want questions that you guys ask that kind of go along with this one is where do you buy bulk fabric I personally don't necessarily buy fabric in bulk bulk fabric would be wholesale fabric pretty much and I don't buy enough for it to be considered wholesale I feel like wholesale kind of starts at the 20 and 30 yard mark but I really only buy like 10 to 15 yards at a time which is still a big amount of fabric but at the same time it's not big enough to be considered bulk just yet so I buy it at normal places where you can buy fabric I don't have any specific wholesalers that I go to or manufacturers or anything like that this is a list of of places that I like to shop from. Some of them are dead stock fabrics, vintage fabrics, thrifted fabrics, or just natural fiber fabrics. So there's a little bit of everything, but these are my go-to places as of right now. And the other most common question is what equipment do you use? What sewing machine do you use? I use a Janome Magnolia 7330 and I really, really love it. It is definitely a bit pricier on sewing machines, but it's not an industrial one or anything. I also have the Singer Pro Finish for my serger. It's worked really well for me. It's not industrial by any means, but does the job. And as far as embroidery I use the brother PE 800 that one is definitely quite the investment and you don't need an embroidery machine if you want to start a business I just personally wanted that it was kind of like an extra little bonus that I wanted but it's not necessary by any means but I really love it it's really great and it is definitely more advanced though next topic let's talk about investment let's talk about money this is probably my most asked question is always just about investments about how much I spend and my profits and just everything like that I get asked so so much and let me be honest with you I'm not a financial advisor I don't know that much about finances I am 21 years old right now so it's not like I have this whole life of experience under me in finances whatsoever so like I'm learning every day with this just as much as you guys are but here's the thing I had enough common sense in me to know that I should never spend more than I have that's some 
something my parents have always very much instilled into my brain. They're really, really good at budgeting and just managing their money. That's something that has luckily been translated to me and I've always been really good about that. I've never overspent. I always have savings. Like I'm pretty good with my money as is. So the financial part wasn't too awful for me. I didn't really need to invest that much money to begin with because I had all the equipment already since I have been sewing forever. It's not like I needed to buy sewing machines and surgeries and all these things. Like I have had all these things for a very long time. It was already in my possession. I didn't need equipment. The only things I actually spent money on as far as like an initial investment, I would say, were the fabrics that I bought for the first collection, my website plan, my shipping supplies, my business cards, and my clothing tags, and my PO box, and that's pretty much it not much to it. So if you want actual numbers, because I know you guys are gonna ask, here's the thing. I bought five fabrics to begin with for my first collection, but I only ended up using three fabrics at first and then the other two later on. So technically, if I would have just bought those first three fabrics for the first collection without having bought the other ones, it would have maybe been $400 for all those fabrics. And I think it was enough for around 10 to 15 of each dress that I originally put out. I bought it all at once thinking I was gonna put all these things out at the same time, but the second set of fabrics didn't come in until much later. So I ended up just putting out one collection and then using those for the second collection. So I had planned to make the first collection a lot bigger, but it just didn't come in time. So I, I didn't do that. But but technically it would have been $400 for that first collection. And then my accessories and like scrunchies and headbands that I had were made from fabrics that I already had. So that was pretty much free because I already had them. My shipping materials maybe were like $200 to begin with for the set that I got and it lasted me quite a long time. My website plan is a monthly plan, but I ended up just buying the yearly one instead because because it, it's technically cheaper in the long run. And I think that it may have been $300 or so. I decided to get one of the higher commerce plans for Squarespace, but that's not really necessary at all. I just wanted those features, so I went for it. And then my business cards were maybe like 50 bucks and my clothing tags were like $100 for like a big set of them. So overall, it wasn't a huge investment to start off with. I would say it was probably anywhere between like $1,000 to $1,500 at absolute most for the initial investment of everything I spent kind of to start off with but at the same time it's not necessary for you to spend that much you don't need to buy like that much fabric I could have been fine buying half the fabric I did so I think that overall when it comes to investment and your finances and stuff figure out what works for you and make a budget that's realistic to yourself and then kind of work around that so let's go into the questions that talk about pricing and finances so the first one is how do you price things I get this question a lot and I think it's really hard sometimes to price things I personally really want to be an affordable brand I don't want to be super luxury high end, but at the same time, ethical and sustainable fashion is not cheap and it's not cheap for a reason. It's not because I'm a name brand by any chance. It's just because the labor is being paid fairly, unlike with fast fashion. And obviously sustainable materials are more expensive than non-sustainable materials, which is why people don't use them as much. So that makes my prices be a little bit higher. I personally think that obviously when it comes to pricing things, you need to take into consideration the cost of materials. So say I'm making t-shirts and each t-shirt takes a yard of fabric to make. How much does that yard cost me? 20 bucks. All right, well, 20 bucks for cost of material. They need to think about other materials, things like threads. Are you using any buttons, any zippers? And also this is where you put in the price for the clothing tags that you put on it. And also the shipping supplies that you're using to send it out, add that up. It's probably just a few dollars. Then you have to think about labor costs. So for me, I pay myself $20 an hour for however long it takes me to make something. So if a t-shirt takes me an hour, I add $20 to the cost to make sure I cover labor because obviously at some point in time, I'm not gonna be making everything myself and I'm gonna have to be paying someone and I wanna be paying them fairly. So that would be what they would be getting if I had somebody else to make it, but it's currently just going to me because I'm making it. And then once you have that figured out, that's your base minimum. Like that is what you need to price it at, at the bare minimum because it has to cover everything and make sure that you're not losing money. That's when you put in your profit. Most stores I would say have a 150% profit margin, if not more. So if I were to add all that up, it would be like what, $45-ish per Say. So you take that 45 and multiply it by 1.5, which would be 150%. And then that gives you 67.5 and that would be your profit margin. So that would be what you add to the initial 45. So then your final price would be $112.50, which I think is a lot of money for a t-shirt. So I personally do not have that high of a profit margin. For me, my profit margin currently is only 50%, which is really, really low. And it should probably be at least 100% just to make sure that I'm actually making money off of it and I'm able to to reinvest that money and grow my business. But because as of right now, when I'm filming this video, I'm living with my parents and I don't have any excess things to kind of worry about as far as rent or food or bills or anything, I'm able to kind of keep my prices a little bit lower and kind of start working up to where I want 
want them to actually be for me to make a living. But for now, it's comfortable and it's fine and I'm able to do it. But obviously at some point I am going to have to up them and make sure that I remember my own worth. I think it's really easy for all of us to kind of feel bad about pricing things higher and feel like we're not worth that. But realistically, we are worth that and we need to understand that for our customers to also understand that. I think that if you're fully transparent about why you price things the way you do, people will understand and it will be okay. The next question is, what do you use for bookkeeping? And I use QuickBooks. I'm honestly not too great at keeping up with it too often. I think probably once a month I'll go on it and kind of sort through all of my payments and everything that has gone through my card. And honestly, I like to use it just to make sure that my money in is always higher than my money out and making sure I'm not spending more than I have and making sure that my savings is going up and all that type of stuff. All right, next up, let's talk about branding. I think this is so fun. I love branding because it's kind of where you give your business personality and you kind of choose how you're gonna portray yourself to the world and it's super fun. So branding, you gotta think about what your color palette is, what kind of fonts you're using, what your overall just vibe and aesthetic is. That's kind of where branding comes in. And it's really important to have very set and specific branding because that's how people can point out like, oh, that's a Natalia dress because the aesthetic, the branding, you see it. Or like, you can tell that that is my Instagram graphic because that's my style and that's my aesthetic and that's my kind of branding. So you definitely do have to think about what your color scheme is going to look like. What kind of fonts do you want to use? Do you want it to be very minimalistic? Do you want it to be kind of maximalist over the top? Do you want it to be super colorful or more muted? Just all these type of things. Make sure it fits obviously your products and your personality and just kind of the overall vibe you're trying to give. Branding also has to do with what your mission statement is and what kind of things you're promoting and your values, your morals, all that kind of stuff also goes into it. So make sure that when you're thinking of your branding, you're also thinking of what kind of messages you're putting out and what you want to promote, things that you want people to see within your business. So for me, obviously I'm promoting like ethical and sustainable fashion and just slow fashion and slow living in general, like ethical consumption, just sustainable living. All that type of stuff is obviously what I am promoting. But on top of that, I am a very inclusive brand. So I'm also promoting just inclusivity, positivity, kindness, love, all that type of stuff is part of my branding as well. It's part of what my brand stands for and what I want to show and portray to the world with my brand. So the question that goes with this one is how do you manage your limiting beliefs? And I think that she means like how do I manage being sustainable and ethical and kind of keeping up with all of that in the process? And to be honest, it is really, really hard to keep up with. Obviously for me, being ethical means making everything myself, which is a lot of work and it would be so much easier for me to send it out to a manufacturer, even an ethical manufacturer. But because I really want to make sure I'm seeing the process and I'm overseeing everything, I am making it myself instead and even with sustainability obviously it limits the materials I can use and being zero waste also limits how I can make things and get rid of things and obviously it forces me to use and reuse scraps and little tiny cutting scraps and all that type of stuff so it is definitely limiting but at the same time that is my brand and that is why people follow me and that is what people expect from me and want to see from me so I know that that is what I have to do and though it is frustrating at times and sometimes I get really overwhelmed with it I know that because it has such an important purpose and that because it is such an important cause that it is worth it in the end and that people are going to appreciate that. So it keeps me motivated in that sense, but it is definitely difficult. And I think it's always going to be easier to take the not so good route. Obviously I could be making so much money as a fast fashion brand and sending my stuff out to Asia to be made and underpaying people and upping the prices like no other and just make a bunch of profit off of people. But I don't want to be that person and I know that even though it's a lot more work and that it's going to take so much more effort, it's gonna be worth it because I'm doing good, if that makes any sense. That is kind of my thought process with it. It's definitely very limiting, but it is really fulfilling at the same time. All right, the next step is marketing. This is probably my most highly requested topic to talk about is how did you market yourself? How did you grow your following? So let's talk about it. Marketing is honestly super fun. And honestly, it's all self-taught. I never took any business classes. I was not a business major by any means. I never took any minors in it or did anything with it. It's all just kind of self-taught, common sense, research type stuff for me. So I'm gonna share with you guys what has worked for me. So obviously majority of my marketing is done through social 
media and I think that's how most people do it nowadays because it's the easiest way to get a global audience and just to kind of reach a lot of people especially in this day and age when everything is so digital already. I think that when you're starting a business you need to think about the kind of social media platforms you want to be using. Are you going to use all of them? Are you going to dedicate your time to one more than the other? Kind of think on that a little bit but my personal opinion is that you kind of need to try a little bit of everything and make sure that you're in the know and relevant on all social media because you never know when one is going to blow up more than the other or when there's a new one that you should get on. All that type of stuff is really important to stay relevant and to stay on top of it. For me that meant starting a TikTok to promote my brand and my business and that blew up. It also meant obviously my Instagram and posting there consistently which that has also blown up. I do post on Facebook not so often and not all of my content because I don't feel like the same posts that go to Instagram can go to Facebook. I feel like it's just a very different audience but I do use Facebook just to make sure I'm reaching kind of that more family and older relatives area of my life and making sure they're keeping up with what I'm doing. So those are the social media platforms I use. We can also talk about email marketing. That's also a really important part of it. Email marketing though it seems like it's outdated and that uh, it's not important it's actually really useful because if social media were to die one of these days if TikTok got banned and Instagram got banned and we didn't have any social media left we could still have our emails because that's something that isn't a social media that could be taken away if that makes sense. So you'll always have your email list. You'll always have that way to contact people. And also think about it this way. Social media only shows your posts to like 20 to 30% of your following. It doesn't actually put it on everybody's feeds. And same with TikTok. It shows it to a couple people. If those couple people like it, it goes to the next couple. So it's not like social media shows your content to absolutely everybody who's following you. Whereas with email marketing, that email goes to absolutely everybody on that list. If you have 10,000 people on that list, it's going to 10,000 people. It's not just going to 20%, seeing if they open it and then sending it out. It's going to all of them. So definitely utilize that as well. Obviously don't go overboard. Nobody likes to get spam emails all the time, but make sure you're using it. So those are the four places that I kind of market myself. And on top of that, I also have a Google My Business account so that when people go to Google and they search like fashion designer near me, at least in Indiana, they'll find me. I'm the first one that pops up there. Or if they search my name, Natalia Trevino Amaro, I'm on there and you can see my Google business page and you can see reviews and all that type of stuff. That's also really important, obviously, as far as marketing. So those are all the ways that I market and different places where I kind of have my foot in the door, if you will. So let's go into questions that go with this. The first one is, what are your marketing strategies? I honestly like to be very active on social media and I like to be in the know of what's going on, especially on TikTok per se. It's really important to stay on top of trends. Using trending sounds is so important. That's how my first TikTok blew up. I got a million views in like two days or something like that. And all of my products got sold out. And that's kind of how I started my business. That was like a couple weeks into me starting. So that was kind of me starting with a bang and it was really cool and it was really awesome. But it wasn't a random TikTok that blew up necessarily. I did it with intention because I knew that that sound that I was using at the time was really, really popular and it was starting to gain a lot of traction. I saw it a lot on my For You page, so I knew it was trending and I knew that a lot of people were liking this sound. So I decided to use it and I decided to use it in a way that I knew would attract people. So the sound that I used kind of just said like, you got it. So I was like, okay, what do I have that people want? So I talked about being a sustainable brand, an ethical brand, and having international shipping and being relatively affordable and all that type of stuff, which obviously drew people in. And the video itself didn't show my product. So that made people have to go to my profile, click on my website, and then view my product, which was all very, very intentional. Because again, I knew that that had a chance of blowing up because of the popularity of the sound. And obviously because of my beliefs and what I was saying, I knew that people would relate to and would like. So it obviously led them to my website and I got a ridiculous amount of page views that night and obviously so many sales. So that's kind of the strategy on TikTok was kind of just using trending sounds, making sure to stay on top of it, making quick, funny content, educational content, just making sure that you're kind of on top of what's new and trendy because that's what's gonna get you maybe viral content. As far as Instagram, I think it's a little bit more difficult, but here's the thing that I've learned about Instagram or I guess any social media in general is if you're using new features that they're providing for you, they're gonna push your content more. So what does that mean for Instagram? As of right now, reels are kind of the new big thing on Instagram right now and they're really trying to push that. So I decided that it would be a good idea to put one of my TikToks that did really well onto my Instagram as a reel and then just let it be and see what would happen. And as of right now, I have nearly a million views on it, which is crazy. And it's gotten me 7,000 followers in the past three to four days, which again is super crazy, especially because Instagram is one of those platforms that's kind of hard to grow on organically. But I made sure to use a new feature that they were providing because they're kind of pushing that content more. And I already knew that content did really well on my TikTok. So I figured it would do really well on Instagram too. 
so i think it's important to just kind of stay on top of it and make sure you know what's new and what's trending and what is popping on social media that's how you make viral content that is how people find you and that is the best strategy i can give you is just to be in the know keep up with trends and just keep going the next question is how did you build such a big following and obviously the last question kind of answered it in a sense of i've had viral content which has really helped me but i also think it's important to be very consistent obviously it's not like everything i post goes viral i've posted hundreds of tiktoks and not every single one goes viral only one has actually really gone viral so it's not like all of my content does super super well but i'm very consistent you know and i know that eventually one of them will do well if i keep posting and if i keep trying and if i'm just persistent on it and same with instagram i post every single day on there i make sure to engage with my audience i make sure to answer to all of the comments i get i answer to dms i make sure to follow people back and engage with their content and just be a very active member of your community you don't just want to be one of those people that posts and ghosts so you need to make sure you're engaging and to do that you also need to make sure that you have engaging content and that your content is easy to engage with if you're only promoting your products all the time kind of hard to engage with and not everybody's going to want to be commenting on that so you want to make sure that aside from promoting your products you also have content that is educational maybe or something that's a little more lighthearted. maybe you're telling some personal stories some fun facts about yourself just make it more than just promoting a product because people obviously they want to follow your business and your products and they like your products and that's why they follow you but at the same time they're gonna want to follow you more and buy more from you if they know you as a person and if they see values and they see a kind of a more personable account behind it not just a business account and make sure that everything you put out is very intentional and that there's a lot of passion behind what you're doing just a thing to keep in mind all right, let's talk about the website and how you're gonna host your product. So I personally use Squarespace and I really, really love it. I think it's a wonderful platform. I love the aesthetic of it. I love how much you can customize it. I honestly have not tried Shopify or Wix really, so I can't say anything on the other platforms, but I think that you should definitely do your research and kind of play around with it and see which one works best for you. You also wanna make sure that your website is user-friendly. You wanna make sure all of your information is easy to find. You wanna make sure it's easy for people to contact you. You wanna make sure that all of your pictures are really clean and crisp. You want to make sure that there's not too much going on, that it's really simplistic and people are able to easily find everything that they need to find and all of the information is there. You want to make sure all your values are on there and making sure people really know what your brand is about because that, at least personally, is the first place that I go to when I go to a new shop's website. I always go to the about or any sort of like mission statement. I want to make sure that their values align with my own and that we meet eye to eye on that and then if they do, then I'll buy from them. The question that goes with this one is how did you make your website and Squarespace is super easy they have a bunch of templates you can use and then customize so that's how I did mine nothing crazy I did not have to code it myself and I don't think you need to either obviously you can if you want to but that would be an extra cost that is not really necessary there's so many tutorials online on how to use Squarespace and customize it and Squarespace help is also just really good and very useful and I use it all the time to add new features and add-ons and plugins and all that type of stuff so definitely just do your research play around with it but it's not that hard <laughs> All right, next let's talk about promoting and your launch day. So once you have everything kind of set up and you're ready to start promoting, you've got your pictures of your products, which you obviously want to make sure they're good pictures. You don't need a professional photographer by any means, but do make sure that it is high enough quality. I would say it's probably smartest to actually use a camera and not just your iPhone, but if you're going to use your iPhone, at least do it in natural lighting and make sure it's really good and crisp. But yeah, you want to start promoting stuff before you launch. I think it's super important to build up some sort of hype before you just launch your product. I personally think that I started promoting my brand maybe a week or two before I actually launched sometime around then so that's kind of the time period I had I was promoting on my Instagram I was promoting on my TikTok and I was promoting on my YouTube channel because I also did a series on how I started my business and just kind of the process so I was promoting it all around and definitely for quite a few weeks to make sure that I built some sort of traction up to my launch day and my launch day honestly went really well I had a good amount of orders granted the majority of my orders were from people that I knew I think I maybe got one or two orders from people I didn't know which were like the best orders ever but even though it was just from people I knew it was still successful because I still got orders on launch day and that's not something everybody can say so I was really content with it and obviously from there I started promoting more and eventually my TikTok went viral and that's when everything kind of sold out and kind of gained more traction it was definitely slow but it was successful and it worked and here we are now so I don't think that you should get too worried if your launch day doesn't go super well or if it takes you a little bit to kind of gain that traction the question that goes with this one is is do you do unpaid collaboration 
promotions or PR packages. And I'm gonna be honest, I have done it before and I have sent stuff out for free for certain people, but I haven't found that it gives me too high of a return per se, at least not for what my product's worth. Obviously it has allowed me to get at least pictures of people with my products on, which is really nice and really helpful because I find that a lot of people buy from me, but not a lot of people actually send me pictures of them in my stuff, which obviously as a customer, you don't have to do that, but it's really helpful obviously when people see other people actually wearing your stuff and you're not just saying you sold all these things, but there's actually proof that people are actually buying stuff. So I would honestly kind of stay away from doing unpaid collaborations and kind of PR packages, unless you have a lot of excess inventory you can give out. But if you're a small business and you are kind of starting up, it's not really necessary and I don't think you have to do that. Next, let's talk about shipping. So you've launched, you've figured out your whole business, now you have all these orders, how are you gonna ship them out? There's obviously a lot of different routes you can take. I personally ship everything with the USPS because I find that A, it's the cheapest and it's simple and easy and I didn't feel the need to have to pay extra for UPS or FedEx or any of those, but it's totally up to you. So I personally use a website called Pirate Ship and that is linked to my Squarespace. So all of my orders from Squarespace kind of come into Pirate Ship and then I'm able to print my shipping labels on there, like buy them and print them. I use a Rolo printer to print them out and I love it. It is a thermal printer. It is wonderful, great investment, probably one of my better investments. And yeah, it's super simple to use that software. You just kind of put in the dimensions of your package, the weight of it, and then it automatically brings in all the information from the order. So it automatically puts in the address that the person put in for shipping. So you don't have to manually put that in or anything. And you can do like a few at a time. So like if 20 people bought two headbands and you know it's the same weight for all of them, you can buy those all at the same time and it'll just print all of them separately, which is really nice. The questions that go with this one are what shipping supplies do you start with? I personally started with some poly mailers, some tissue paper, some note cards, some stickers, and a little We Care card, but those were free from Eco and Clothes. I get all my stuff from Eco and Clothes. They are a sustainable packaging company. Obviously, that is also something to keep in mind. What kind of packaging do you want? Do you want it to be branded? Do you not want it to be branded? Do you care if it's sustainable or not? There's obviously a lot that goes into the packaging as well, so you do want to kind of think on that. Personally, for me, it was super important for it to be sustainable. I didn't really care for it to be branded. I don't think that's really important or necessary. Like, yeah, it's super cute if you get a branded package, but at the end of the day, that's just gonna go into the trash. So I'd rather it just be a sustainable kind of way to package things rather than it just be cute and for a picture or whatever, you know? So those are the things that I started with and that's still what I continue with. I don't have anything extra. I just package everything up into the tissue paper and use the sticker to seal it up. And then I put it into the poly mailer and I use the little note cards to write a note on and call it a day. That's pretty much it. The other question is, how did you set up worldwide shipping? was Squarespace friendly with that. And to be honest, it was kind of difficult to set up. Not difficult, but a time consuming, I would say. I had to go to USPS.com and just kind of manually put in like, say I'm going to be shipping this package of these dimensions and this weight to Australia and see how much it would cost. And then put in a different weight to the same place and see how much it would cost. So then I made a list of countries and how much it would cost me for each one. And then I was able to kind of generalize them. So a lot of Europe was kind of the same pricing. Like Western Europe had the same pricing, but Eastern Europe kind of had the same pricing and then places like Australia and New Zealand had the same pricing and the other parts of Asia and then South America has different pricing and then Canada and Mexico are kind of similar pricing so I was able to kind of group them by pricing but you do have to manually put in like the countries the pricing per weight so I also had to figure out per weight how much it would cost and what that increase is but once you do it for one you can kind of figure out the rest a lot easier once you kind of get in the hang of it I hope that made sense it's kind of difficult to figure out but I think it's worth it a lot of people really appreciate the fact that I have worldwide shipping that I'm able to be inclusive in that way. So if that's something you're looking into, it does take a little bit, but I think it's worth it. The last step of your business and starting your business is just analyzing things. Now that you've put out your business, now that you've launched and you're shipping stuff out and all of that stuff, you need to start analyzing and you need to start getting feedback from people. Ask your customers if they're liking it. Ask people to leave reviews, see how you can improve. There's always ways we can improve. I'm always improving. My social media from when I started to how it is right now has improved so much in the quality and my content and what I'm posting. And even my website has improved so much from the very start of how I started it to where it is right now. I've added so much more information. I've made it hopefully easier to manage and I'm still constantly changing it, constantly making sure to improve things. It's super important that you are open to constant change and constant growth because that is just something that I've seen that comes naturally with having a business and being an entrepreneur is just you're constantly growing, you're constantly learning. There's It doesn't ever stop and I think that's the beauty of it. I think it's super fun and really cool to constantly be learning and growing but it's definitely something you have to be open to. You can't stay stagnant in one spot forever. 
here. So lastly, I have a few other questions that I didn't know where to put into this video, but I did want to make sure that I answered them. So I'm going to do a quick little Q&A right now. First question is, how do you stay motivated? Considering I do everything myself, it is difficult to stay motivated, but it's a lot easier for me to have that motivation when I know that the stuff I'm making is going to a certain person in a certain place. Since I make everything to order, I'm not just making random inventory and hoping that it sells. It's like I'm making this t-shirt right now that I know I'm going to package up and ship to Australia to said person. And I think that's really cool. And that is something that motivates me kind of seeing that end goal and seeing that there are people on the other side of what I'm doing every single day is what keeps me the most motivated. If I didn't have that, I don't know if I could get up in the mornings every single day because it is a lot of willpower to kind of get yourself up and moving every day. But having people and having you guys as a support system and kind of doing it for somebody is really what motivates me the most. The second question is time management and how I schedule my workflow. I just personally am really good at time management. It's something that I've always been good at just because I'm kind of a perfectionist with a lot of things and I hate to procrastinate. I like to get things done ASAP. It's something that I get from my mom. She's the same way. So this is just the way I've been. But the way that I keep it all organized is just to-do lists. I don't have anything fancy where I write down to-do lists. I just have a notebook and I write everything I need to do, whether it be for a week or for the day or whatever. I write it all down to make sure that I can start checking things off. I find it super satisfying to actually physically check stuff off a list and see how much I've done. It really helps me stay motivated and feel like I'm actually progressing. Even if it's like very small tasks, I still write them down. So if I am making a t-shirt, I'm not just gonna write make t-shirt. I'm gonna write cut it out, embroider it, sew it, ship it so that I can start ticking it off the list a little bit faster and have more things that I feel like I've accomplished. It really helps me. And I know that's a very just psychological thing, but it helps. So if it helps you too, then do it. I think it's really good. To-do lists are my best friend. That is how I manage everything. The next question is just about legal stuff and registering my business. I personally registered as a sole proprietor and I did not register right away. I registered, I believe in October, if not late September. And I just did a lot of research on it. My dad and I sat down for a while to just kind of look into it. And I ended up hiring LegalZoom to do it all for me because my dad and I went to do it on our own and it just became really complicated and we weren't sure how to do it properly. And because it is such an important legal document, I didn't want to mess it up and risk being in any sort of legal trouble. So I just went ahead and paid for somebody to do it for me because there are professionals for a reason. So I just went ahead and did that and made sure that they kind of did it for me and had that all properly set up so I didn't have to worry about it. The next question is just talking about dealing with hate and negativity and people not being supportive, stuff like that. I personally had a really good support system. I feel like I generally have people around me who support everything I do, but that doesn't mean that everybody believes in you. I think there's a very big difference between people supporting you and people believing in you because obviously you can support somebody but think that they're going to fail. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people backed me up and they, you know, pushed me. They're like, yeah, you got this. But in their head, they're like, she does not got this. She is going to fail. She needs a plan B. She needs to go back to school, whatever it may be. I dealt with a lot of people, you know, asking me what my plan B was and asking me if I was going to go back to school and if I was planning on getting a job. And honestly, it's not very easy to deal with. It is very difficult and it is totally a mind game of you just locking those people out and not thinking about it and just letting yourself be in your own thoughts and letting yourself believe that you got this because at the end of the day you just need to believe in yourself and if you believe in yourself and you give yourself positive affirmations and positive energy and all of that then you're gonna be good to go the only thing that matters is that you believe in yourself and you're giving yourself positive affirmations and that you are truly motivating yourself to get to where you want to be and you believe that fully because I think that the law of attraction is very real and I think that manifestation is really real the more good energy you put out the more good energy is gonna come right back to you so if you're really doubting yourself and not believing in yourself and kind of being insecure about your business, then you're kind of putting that negativity towards yourself. You need to honestly just believe in yourself. Even if you're scared about it, I'm not going to say I'm like super confident about everything I do. I'm definitely not, but I do have to kind of put up that front for myself and tell myself because if I don't, nobody else will. And if I don't do it for myself, nobody's going to do it for me and it's not going to do well. So I'm not going to sit here and say it's easy, but uh, it's definitely possible and you can definitely get through it. Just got to block it out. Always block out the haters. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it and I hope that it was really helpful for you. I do get a lot of questions about this all the time. So I've been really wanting to make this video and hopefully putting all that information in a place where you can find it easily. Let me know if you guys have any other questions or if you guys have any fun little business things that you'd like to add in, things that have worked for you or didn't work for you. Let's just like talk about them down below and just share your stories and share your experiences because I think that the best way to learn is just through each other and through our own experiences. Anyway, this wouldn't be a good business video if I didn't promote myself. So feel free to follow my social media. My Instagram is at Natalia Trevino Amaro. That is my business 
business one. And if you want to follow my personal one, it's at natalia.trevino. Feel free to, you know, check that one out too. You can also follow some behind the scenes on my TikTok at Natalia Trevino Morrow. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed because I post a lot of fun videos on here, a lot of business content, a lot of behind the scenes, my production, all that type of stuff. I do love to share that with you guys. So if you're interested, feel free to follow so that you don't miss any of my uploads. And that is it for today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.